Hey guys, Steve here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm going to show you how to replace your crankshaft and transmission bearings in your dirt bike engine. Bearings are often overlooked, and more often than not, they need to be replaced when rebuilding your engine. So today, I'm going to show you how to replace your crankshaft and transmission bearings on your dirt bike engine. To do this job, you're going to need a basic set of hand tools, especially an assortment of sockets, along with the tusk bearing installation and removal tools, a torch, gloves, rags, and safety glasses. And always refer to your OEM service manual for more information, proper procedures, and torque specs. And as for parts, we're using the Hot Rods Transmission and Crankshaft Bearing Kit. So let's get started. For this video, we've completely disassembled this two-stroke engine, but this will also apply to your four-stroke engines as well. If you need help or more information about disassembly and assembly, check out our top and bottom end rebuild videos. The crankshaft bearings are usually the largest bearings and the most difficult to remove or replace. So let's start with those first. Now this works really good if you grab a couple of blocks of wood to work on. I do want to mention if your bearing or race is still on your crankshaft, we will use our Tusk Crank Bearing Puller tool to remove it. If they're not and they're still in the cases, then we can use our Tusk Bearing Remover tool or a socket and hammer. Now in tightening this up, you want to do it evenly from side to side. And the idea is this will squeeze together underneath the race or bearing and get under it so that when you attach your puller to the top of it, you can just pull it right off. Now on this motor, most all the bearings you can get to from both sides, so it makes it easy to remove them with a socket and a hammer. However, there is one bearing that they consider a blind flange bearing, whereas you don't have access from the other side. So this is where our tusk tool comes in handy. Whereas you can insert it, tighten it up, and it will flange out and grab the inside of the bearing. You can then attach your slide hammer and beat it out. You want to make sure it's nice and snug. Now I like to use 2x4s for two good reasons. One is it's soft and you're less likely to damage your cases, but you do need to be careful. And two, it provides a level surface that you can move around when you're removing the bearings as well. So now that we've got our case situated and our slide hammer situated, we can go ahead and remove the bearing. Now if it becomes more difficult to remove, try using a little heat on the outer diameter of the bearing now make sure to use the same size of socket as the bearing. Now we just need to repeat these processes on all of the rest of our bearings. Now there's a number of different fasteners that manufacturers will use as a retainer to hold the bearing in, but just make sure that you remove them first before you remove the bearings. Now anytime you use a hammer, just be careful not to hit the engine cases. Now that we have our engine cases cleaned, we need to inspect them. There's a few things to look for while doing this. You want to inspect every nook and cranny of your engine cases for cracks, weak spots, just due to the life cycle of the motor and what it's been through. Now if it's, if it's had catastrophic failure, a lot of times, you know, if a crankshaft comes apart, you can damage the case. If your transmission comes apart, you can damage the case. And you definitely want to pay attention to those areas. If you look right here, these marks are telling us that the bearing was spinning in the case slightly. There's a few remedies we can do when we install the bearing to solve this problem from happening in the future. Most of the rest of the bearing uh, seats look pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and start installing bearings and show you how to do that. Now bearings are considered an interference fit. That's why they're so hard to remove and replace. A widely used method is called the sweat-in method. And that's where you take heat and you heat the engine case and you freeze your bearing and that makes the install much easier to do. You can also use a socket and a hammer or also the existing bearing that you just removed and you can use that to install the new bearing or you can use our Tusk bearing install tool. That one works pretty good. Now to heat up your engine case, you can use a torch or a heat gun. Just be careful that anything in the surrounding area that's going to get hot, uh, it, you won't damage it. If it's a sensor or something, you need to remove that prior to this. Otherwise, you'll have problems down the road. Now if you're not sure if it's hot enough, 
take a little water and splash a little on it. It needs to sizzle. If it doesn't sizzle, then heat it up some more until it does. If you heat up your engine case, be careful not to burn yourself. Now that almost went all the way in, but let's use our tusk bearing install tool to get it the rest of the way. Now to check to see if your bearing is in all the way, there's a few ways. A good visual inspection if you can see it from the back side. And then the other way is as you're hitting it in, it will make two different sounds. It'll make the sound when you hit it, and then once it's seated all the way, that sound will change and it'll be a higher pitch. So listen for that. Now let's move to the transmission bearing that's slightly spun in the case. To solve this problem, we can use a little Scotch-Brite pad and rough up the surface, and then apply some thread locker to the outer part of the bearing and install it. Now when you install it, we're going to use the socket and hammer method, and then we also show you how to stake the case, as they call it. Now to stake the case, you want a good center punch, and essentially we're going to push some of the aluminum from the case into the bearing. And you only need to do this in two or three spots on the bearing. Now the last method I want to show you is using the old bearing that you just removed to install the new bearing. Now this bearing is a prime candidate because how thin it is here on the outer diameter of the race, it's going to be hard to find a socket that's going to be just that right size because you do not want to install a bearing and beat on the inner race. You could damage the, the bearing and defeat the purpose. The other thing is, if there's not a lot of room around the engine case to hold your bearing while you tap it in, you can take a socket and slide it on the inner diameter of the bearing, slide the old bearing over top of that one, and then tap that in. Just make sure that you put your engine case up on blocks so that you can do so. Now just use whatever method we just showed you to install the rest of the bearings in your cases. If you have your own method, go ahead and comment below and share with us and let us know how you do it. Now that we have all the bearings installed into our engine cases, you might run into a bearing like this one where the inner race needs to be installed under the crankshaft prior to installing it into your motor. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Now this bearing is a needle type bearing. And that's where the inner bearings are cylindrical or barrel shaped and a typical bearing would be round balls inside of it. This slides inside of that, and if we were to press this on, this fiber ring could get damaged, it could damage the inner bearings, therefore it would ruin the bearing. So we need to press this inner race onto our crankshaft so that when we install it, we're not gonna damage the new bearing. So we've got our crankshaft here. If we go ahead and press this inner race onto our crankshaft, we're gonna cause the crankshaft to go out of true. That would be squishing the crank cheeks together and then you can't use it anymore. So we need to fill this gap right here first before we can press this on. First you want to take your caliper and you want to measure the inner gap. Now you need to find a hardened material laying around like steel that you can fill this gap with. The measurement you just took should help with this process. To fine tune this you can take your tusk feeler gauge to fill in the rest of the gap. Now that we've filled the gap we can install our race. I'm going to go ahead and heat this up because I want it to install as easy as possible. And again, be careful not to burn yourself. Now if your bearing or bearing race doesn't go on this easy, go ahead and continue using the socket and hammer. If you have a hydraulic press, go ahead and use that. That makes it pretty easy as well. But this is a prime example of how well heat works when installing or removing bearings. Now let's move our makeshift spacer and our crankshaft is ready to be installed. Next, install your retainers using a little thread locker and torque to your manufacturer's specification. And lastly, take a little motor oil and stick it on the bearings and cycle them just to make sure that they work smoothly. And that's it. Now you're ready to continue on rebuilding your bottom end. If you need more parts or tools like the ones we use today, come check us out at RockyMountainATVMC.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Steve, catch you next time.